Hi, I'm Dr. Stonish, and today we're here to demonstrate physics forceps and how they are used for atraumatic extractions. Our patient has tooth number 14 that we're going to be extracting. Here's the physics forcep, and you can see there are two basic parts. There's a beak and there's a bumper. Our goal will be to place the beak about two to three millimeters subgingival to the crown on the palate and then place our bumper as far as we can into the vestibule. Uh, unlike a typical extraction in which the tooth is uh, elevated uh, and rocked back and forth, the physics forcept is used to pop the tooth out of the socket and it's just a brilliant instrument. So you see my positioning on the palate and my positioning on the cheek. I'm slipping a little on the palate into this crown margin. So I'm going to take a burr and flatten the palate. I can use this surgical burr so I can get a better grip. I'm not taking any bone away, I'm just flattening the palate there. Once again, I reposition my beak and my bumper. I made that flat on the palate enough to cover the width of the beak. And now I'm not squeezing my instrument. As you can, here I'll show you a little bit better. I'm just rotating. It may take three or four minutes for our tooth to loosen and that's fine because the ligament around the tooth is being broken down by the enzymatic action. And so if you need to take a break and walk away I just want to take my time because I know this tooth has had a old root canal with silver points and I don't want to fracture. Here you see the tooth popping. So now I'm going to stop. And use a delivery instrument. Although it looks like the tooth came out to the cheek or to the buckle, really the tooth was being elevated out of the socket. So now I could take this delivery instrument And complete my extraction. Wow. Nice extraction site, atraumatic buckle wall is still intact and that's what my goal was. Uh, you can see we've positioned our membrane in place. The biggest mistake doctors make is that they don't position far enough apically or pal palatally and then at the suture removal the tissue falls out. So make sure you're on bone. You can see now that I can pull my membrane back a little bit and I have a nice little envelope or a window here to pack my bone. I'm going to use a putty And it's a combination of demineralized cortical bone and mineralized cancellous bone. And I'm able to inject it right into the socket. However, when you're placing your bone, one of the important factors is to remember that you don't want to pack it as hard as you'd pack amalgam. You don't want to crush those bone particles and pack them too tightly. So 
so you could see how nicely that looks and I'm able to take my membrane and position it over the bone and now I'm going to tuck it into the buckle. The key is for my barrier to lay flat. You can see how nice and flat it is. And now we're going to place a suture. In placing the suture I'm going to come from the inside and sometimes my assistant will hold my membrane down for me. I didn't want to pull too hard on that buckle and we're going to place one more across. You can see that we've placed two sutures, two uh, cross sutures across the membrane. And in positioning the sutures it's important, you could see I could pull here and tug, but the positioning of my sutures is such that when uh, the patient goes to show his wife at home <laughs> the membrane and uh, the tissue the connective tissue will all stay in place so that's very important once again I'll be re removing these sutures at one week and then the membrane at four weeks and it's just amazing you'll see the end results in four weeks as to how this membrane keeps the soft tissue from invaginating into that bone and we'll have a nice bony matrix that's starting to form in four weeks already completed an atraumatic extraction with the new physics forceps which is just a brilliant technique the adjacent teeth were not damaged the bone is intact and the patient will be ready for an implant in a matter of six months